Bless the Lord forever. In this day. Why? Because some young men have been transformed. You can't contain it. Boy, I went to a tiny church. You know what we did Sunday morning? We carried the church organ in the street where there was poverty. And we had our street Sunday morning. Where did Jesus preach? In a lovely church with stuffed seats and stained glass windows and massive choir and an organ? No, he didn't. He didn't often get in the synagogue. He preached in the street. What did we do Sunday night after the service? We went back in another area, a poor area, took the organ again and we sang for about an hour and testified and preached. And it was wonderful. I, thought I got my first taste there of, of the real concern for the lost. And I'll tell you what it was. It started through an American that went to the Indians. David Brainerd. And I said, well, God sins the same. And I lay in dust. I just started. I got everything printed to start my own business. I took it to the altar. I said, it's there. I finished with it. Didn't touch it. I'm glad a thousand times over that I have. I have one thing equal with Dr. Tover. I finished school in the eighth grade, if that's any congratulation. I helped you. And he did. And I've learned to love the Lord. And I want to love him more. And if I had a thousand tongues, I'd preach. Boy, you'd be here a long while if I had a thousand tongues, wouldn't you? I told that young man we'd pray for his group. They were concentrating on the Mormons. Let's remember that tonight. Uh, Jacob had a special request for prayer. He has a difficult situation tomorrow to be in with some other people counselling, so he asked for prayer. There are different groups around the country keep saying, remember, I say, oh, I'll tell you what, the man, uh, there was a man here a few months ago, remember, from Canada? That big Church of England preacher. They had a move up there about two years or less ago. And in that great church with its stained glass windows and everything, people were laid everywhere, slain in the spirit, he said. But within 18 months, they'd all backslidden. Gone back to their drinking, gone back to their dancing. And he said this over the phone to me this morning. He talked quite a while. And he said, you know, up here, he said, these charismatics don't know a thing about repentance. They just think, he said, it's like Jim Baker. You just say you're sorry. If Jim's sorry, why is he going to try and build another one? If he's sorry, why doesn't he take all the money back? He said, I want to tell you, I love my staff. What did the staff say last night? One of the leading men said, why didn't he love us when he was here with us? He was arrogant and unapproachable. You see, the world doesn't forget that God is going to move, God is going to vindicate, not my preaching, anybody else, he's going to vindicate the passion of his son. One thing I'm through. When they were needing young men to go and offer their lives on the plantations down in the Caribbean years ago, <coughs> there were two young men of the Moravians offered to go. And as the ship was pulling away, somebody shouted and said, you'll never come back again. They went and stood on the slave box down in St. Thomas. It was the only way to get into a plantation. And these lovely uh, golden-haired young Germans stood on the slave block. And when they gave them the money, they said, give it, to, give it to Pastor Spendelberg and he'll send it back to Germany to pay the fare of somebody else coming out. And when they said, these two young men, remember, you'll never come back, it's a one-way ticket. And they just shouted back, may the lamb that was slain, was it? That's right. Yeah, they borrowed that from the uh, yeah the covenants said that first I think. But anyhow, it was their language. May the lamb that was slain see of the reward of his sufferings. And they went and they put a chain round their necks. They put a collar. And when the men turned their head, that iron chain cut cut their necks. And they fasted and died very often. They put a rope round them, and they put five men. And the secret sign was when they chain you up to plough, get in the middle so you can testify at each end to the one on the right and those on the left. You know what the sign was? It wasn't just on their stationery, it was the sign of the whole group. They had a, an ox leaning forward. On the right hand they had an altar. On the left hand they had a plough. It said underneath, ready for either. Under the plough it said service. Under the altar it said sacrifice. And they said we're ready for either. Service or sacrifice. Live or die, it doesn't matter. Do you wonder they had revival? Do you wonder the Holy Ghost came on their fellowship at 11 o'clock Wednesday morning? 13th of August, 1727, the Holy Ghost came and a prayer meeting started that lasted for 100 years. It never stopped, day or night. Boys and girls at 8 and 9 were weeping and travelling for the salvation of people they didn't know a thing about except they were black people who were slaves. Revival lasted 100 years non-stop praying. 
We want it for a weekend. We want to be devout for a little while. Not too much. It'll interfere with our plans. You see, we're planning this, we're planning that. Forget it. Get his plan and let's do it. Whatever it is. So let's go with a holy hatred to prayer. A holy hatred to the devil. And a holy love for the Lord. Let's remember these precious people who are asking for prayer. If you just pray for these in different parts of the country, God knows where they are. And pray for Jacob, I told him we would. Thank you, I'm sorry I took so much time, but there you are.